Never underestimate for the people in the eye of the storm how frightening it is. This was true in, in SARS, it was true of bird flu, it was certainly true of Ebola, and it's certainly been true of this pandemic. As a family, as a patient, as a, a nurse or a doctor, it's frightening. You're director of the Wellcome Trust, where science and humanity meet. What's the innovation that excites you today? There's so much that is exciting. You know, in a, in a crisis like we're going through at the moment, uh, is also, of course, a, a time of, of amazing progress. The scientific advances of the last year have been staggering. I think that will change medicine in the years to come. But it's really this appreciation that for all the great challenges of the 21st century, science has a critical role to play. Society must support that. That, I think, is the innovation in a way that most excites me. We're living in a world with multiple stresses, including but not limited to the current pandemic. What could really improve the human condition? I think one of the greatest threats of the 21st century will be inequality. It'll be a world of haves and have nots, of, uh, of disparities within countries and between countries. And then we must make sure as well that science is not the preserve only of those who can afford to pay for it. The only way we can address that are uh, through making sure that science and society are one, they're part of our culture, and they're part of the way that humanity goes forward together. No one does that better, I think, than Welcome. And now what initiative you're bringing us is this programme called LEAP, which seeks to achieve major outcomes in human health in a very short time frame, five to ten years. You look at the potential and you speak of it in terms of what the Sputnik did for the space age. So what do you think LEAP could do in our modern age? I think science is in danger of becoming conservative. Every scientist who may be listening to this in the world is used to the pain of getting a grant. Uh, writing a long application to a funding body, a national body or a philanthropic body like the Welcome uh, and having that either accepted or rejected. I'm afraid that that has driven a relatively conservative approach to science where people think in three to four year cycles where what question will I ask that will get me the grant rather than the question they would may like to ask and what the welcome leap is there to do is to liberate scientists really to say to them what do you really want to do what if I could do this? What would that do in terms of improving the human condition? Do you think China needs a welcome trust? <laughs> I, I, I never get into discussions about what anybody else needs in those terms, James, because uh, I think humility when dealing with uh, other, other cultures and other countries is important. But one of the common features of really strong scientific ecosystems is where there is a plurality of funding. I'm looking at Sweden with the Wallenberg Foundation. I'm looking at Germany with the Max Planck Association. Indeed, looking at America with the Howard Hughes model uh, of funding in the United States. I think these mechanisms that are complementary but different, I think gives you a, a richer uh, scientific environment in which science can really thrive. From the Well is a new series with global leaders brought to you by the China Current and Tsinghua Vanki School of Public Health.